Hey, we are live, honey. Hi. How you doing? We trying, you know, I'm playing around with the thing. Yeah. Make the show better. And there's a phone call in the back. As you know, we have stopped doing, you know, more than one a week, but um, now we have so many guests this week, we had to yeah. do it all in, well, not all in one shot. But not all in one shot, but just 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 about. Just about. Um it's um somebody's calling. It's just the answering machine in the back. It's live. Don't don't. It's live. So hey, hey, hey. What's up, guys? Um, we're having a blast this week. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know what, what to expect, um, you know, with everything being virtual and, um, but it's, it's turning out to be really fun. Pretty good, pretty exciting, learning, yeah. learning a lot from our guests. A little bit know. of work, but, mm -hmm. but it's, it's all definitely worth it because we're, oh, Steve, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, but we're having a blast and, and it's so much fun. Um, every night this week we are having on actors, filmmakers, screenwriters, producers, um, directors from the Urban Action Showcase and Expo. Um, it is, they, they have um, like a cosplay uh, portion of it as well. When we come mm -hmm. in, everyone is dressed up. Do we, right. I think I met the first year, I think I may have met like 10 different blades blade you guys know who blade is no oh yeah there was, was a lot of them we took a picture with them mm -hmm. yeah. and um uh show who someone was dressed like um was it is the character show sure enough show sure enough yes show sure enough um so it was it was great it mm -hmm. was great and um you know so this year we're doing it virtually and we're trying to fit everyone in as much as we can so uh -huh. we're bringing in all these awesome awesome talented people yes so you guys can see who they are um so and and also you guys you know when we post everything hey i have that mug when we post everything at the end of the night make sure you guys click on that urban action showcase link and um we're going to be announcing what block the films are in or mm -hmm. um some of them are screenplays and are not filmed as of yet so we are really hoping that um, those stories will get to come onto the screen very soon. But you can always follow these wonderful, talented people on uh, their social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we had um, a, a busy day, but the gym was closed. We didn't have any. Yeah, I didn't have to work today. No gymnastics. Well, actually, I you had. Didn't, you didn't have I to didn't work. I didn't have to work, but, but I worked because you did work a I had a private, private lesson. A f you had a few. <laughs> yeah, a couple of Tai Chi. Um, some, I had a Tai Chi class today. It was very exciting. Only only one person showed up today. <laughs> I thought there were two ladies there when I got there. Um, in the gym. Oh, yeah. You actually, there were two people. Yeah, like, yeah. One showed up and then the other one came in a little later. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm going to give you an idea what I'm fooling around with here. Yeah. We're getting more technical. Yes, good, indeed. good stuff. I love it. So yeah, we're messing around a little bit. That that is um totally you. Totally me. Yeah, I don't. Um, I see some of our guests. Uh, they are waiting on the studio. Daryl, which mug do you have? Do you have this one, or do you have the one with the blue handle? I think he has the. Which one do you have? Do you have this one? He might have the one with the blue handle. Steve says he likes the new set. We do too, Steve. 
It yes, very, Steve, thank you for watching, Steve. We set thank it up in less in. Than, than five minutes. <laughs> five minutes, yes. So, you guys, tonight, our very first guest, Mike, you're leaning on the, you're on the side if you want to flip your screen somehow. Maybe he's a gymnast. Maybe he is. <laughs> That means oh, in the right place. Awesome. So tonight on the show, in our first block, we have Gio Perez and Mike Fallon. Yes. Okay, indeed. great. Um, so these two gentlemen co-directed the film Revenge of the Titan, um, which is in block nine. So we are going to bring them in. Okay, Daryl has the mug that you're using. Okay. So thank you guys for joining we're us. We're going to bring to side a little bit, we're so. going to bring Mike and Gio in right now. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, there yeah, we go. Good. How are you guys? Hi. Thank you guys for joining us on Tweed Talks. Oh, we're very excited to be here with Mike. I have oh, my yeah. finally. I actually gave my co-director here with me and. You know, we're he's busy doing his stuff and I'm busy doing my stuff, but finally yeah. we're here to be with you guys. So this is gonna be exciting. Awesome, awesome. We're so glad to have you guys on to talk about your film, Revenge of the Titan. Um, to watch your film, we had to like we went through a lot. Today. We went through a lot because I guess the site is a little bit glitchy today. So um oh. we have a chance to watch the film we did um and we are so happy to have you guys on um so whichever one you guys can tell us about the film what went into making it what inspired you to make it that would be uh G that would be Mike? okay you want to go first okay. you wanna go? all right i'll go first uh so when we were making the film i wrote it back in we, we, we started we started working on it around 2019 2018 uh, -huh. uh you know with pre-production and, and writing the script and then uh with, then then me geo uh, we got linked up through a mutual friend in the actual co the the lead of the short uh Gichi gamba and from there on out we were able to recruit more stuntmen the rest of the cast and crew and then we were able to get our locations get the costumes made and then we just we went for it and just filmed everything in like 13 hours and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was a crazy time filming it. Wow. How long yeah. did it take you to do the choreography and things like that? Did you start ahead of time that, or? Yeah, yeah, we did prep. That's all Gio right there. Gio yeah, did we, uh, we got prepared for, I think maybe like a month and a half, close to two months. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would meet with all the actors uh, once a week and we, we would go over the choreography. So when we were going to shoot, then everybody was ready to do their part. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and once once you got every you know everybody doing it together, then that's how we fi filmed it. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yes, yeah, we did. We, they did practice a while back. I mean, look, you, you're look, looking at Mike Fallon here. This guy will come in. He will be a beast. He'll come <laughs> in and practice. He'll come out sweating every practice. So it was. It was really exciting to have all these guys uh, practice their fighting choreography. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I really, really appreciate the fight choreography. It was great. It was action packed. Um, and I, I, I definitely in, enjoyed that aspect. And I guess I guess I'm an action fan now. Yes. <laughs> this guy is usually, you know, you know, I'm, all about the action and, and fight choreography. So I, I appreciated that that part of the film. So thank you for that. I, I tried to get into it. So uh, what made you come up with the concept of the film? Oh uh, man, it was it was pretty crazy. It was a uh, it was actually um this was yeah so this was back so it was like right after Christmas. I actually start it was on my birthday actually. I was talking to Geechee, the the lead actor, and mm -hmm. we were we were thinking like he was like he's like we gotta do something, and and then I was like I was heavily watching a lot of like the CW TV shows and like DC comic book shows. And I, but, I, but I didn't like what they were doing with some of the characters and how, how they ruined some of them. Oh, hello? Yeah, hey, we can hear you, we can hear you. Hear you. Keep, keep talking, Mike. <laughs> oh, maybe he froze uh, up. He might have oh, froze. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got oh, everybody, everybody is here. But yeah, so basically, uh, I specifically didn't like how they were treating the character Mr. Terrific on the TV show Arrow. 
And you know what people say, if you don't like it, want to do something about it. So uh, I decided to, to, to like basically bring, pay tribute to the character to how he should have been portrayed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it, it snowballed from there. And then I decided to, to really do a, a mashup of superheroes you don't usually see team up at all. Where it's like popular mm -hmm. characters like Nightwing and Aqualad. It's like deeper cut characters like Gangbuster, Static Shock, mm -hmm. and Mr. Terrific. I see. Very cool. So is this going to be a series or um, or a film? Oh, uh, man. Well, me and you have been talking. So we got about four more uh, follow-ups planned out. And we were going to start shooting them at the beginning of the year. But as you know, COVID hit. Yeah, and right. uh, yeah, so... We're now trying to get everything COVID safe so we can actually start doing the follow-ups mm -hmm. in, in a safe, you know, within the guidelines of how to shoot now because it's right. we, tricky. I, I, know, I know what we were talking about is getting some of the characters and, and do some backup stories uh, about them. Yeah. Uh, for example, you saw I, I played Gangbuster on the film, which is the guy with the red suit. Right. And right. Mike uh, played uh, Static Shock. So... Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about going back and maybe, uh, you know, he, he's writing a couple stories based on those characters. So, okay. So, so we're waiting on that. So that's that's pretty much the the one of the things that we're gonna follow up with that film. Are you uh, yes. selling it to anyone so far? Uh well, so far what we're what we're trying to do is basically just get 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 about a, a, a small batch of these shorts done. And mm -hmm. uh, and so like I got representation, and so me and Jira plan on using that to try to touch the to get in touch with Warner Brothers to show what they for them because they have they have a whole bunch of different films that they're trying to develop in TV shows now, and they they need okay. talent. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. That is great. So you said you shot the film. Was it twenty eighteen? Uh, we started. I started writing in 2018. We shot it. Writing. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we shot. No, we it shot it around. It was 2019. Yeah, 2018. Man, this is time is flying right now. Yeah, yeah, we shot yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Our concept of time is, has been lost right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it almost seems like we lost the whole year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, is this the first time you guys have worked together? Yeah, that yes. was the actually, yes. the the way I met Mike was uh, Salwin Ward, which is the one of the uh, characters in in uh, the Power Rangers. Uh, I used yeah. to I used to I did I've done fight choreography for him, and and he used to be one of my uh, martial arts students. Oh, so okay. so then he contacted me with Gichi Gamba, which is the main lead on our film. Mm -hmm. And that's how I met Mike. And then we started going over what his vision was, what, what he wanted to do with his story. And that's how we met. And now we've been, you know, we've been doing other projects now. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, we, we, yeah we, we just did like a Zoom horror film together about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was challenging, but intriguing. Oh, cool. So have either one of you ever had any uh, submissions in the Urban Action Showcase before? Or is this your first year? First, first time. First year. Oh, man, you missed you missed a lot. But but it's a good thing that you did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the in-person event is, is... The in-person is incredible. It's huge. Right, so yeah. get, get yeah. that together, and then next year you can submit the other the other episodes in there. <laughs> at oh, we Definitely. Yeah, in California. Okay. Okay. California, you're, right? You're both in California. Yes. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock there now, right? <laughs> <laughs> there it is five five fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> we we were talking to someone in Russia one time, oh, and it yeah. was like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. She. Oh, she okay. Really <laughs> That's where I'm. So, did you enjoy the urban? Mm -hmm. It's kind of you know online. Did you enjoy okay. the Your experience with the urban action showcase? What oh yeah, like yeah, it? yeah, it was fun. I mean, I've, well, you know what? You're doing everything from the comfort of your home, so you're able to see everybody. You know that uh, I know I got a chance to see. Um, I forgot what the title was for that uh, segment, but. It had some of the martial art black belts uh, that were, I guess, oh, yeah. old school guys. 
and they were talking about their film days. I know it was uh, Van Cleef. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You watched the yes. uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Where's yeah. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get to see the whole thing, but we saw, yeah, uh, Ron Van Cleef. Was, was Michael Jai White in that one? And yes. Fred Williamson? And um, was Huggy yeah. Bear in that one? Yes. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I've, I've followed uh, Van Cleef for a while. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as a martial artist, I mean, you get to know some of these guys, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, and he he's a you know he's an inspiration to me, you know, because uh, not only did he, you know, I think he went to China and then started doing yeah. films over there, yeah. but you know, he was one of the first too, you know, uh, first right. black man that were that were doing uh, martial art films, mm -hmm. and then so not only that, but he's always challenging him, challenging himself. So that's kind of like something that I feel that I'm connected to because it's uh, I always want to challenge myself too, and I know I know Mike does too. But in, in my case, uh, when it comes to martial arts, I'm always challenging myself to getting into film to do other stuff uh -huh. that hasn't been seen and things yeah. like that. So yeah, he's yeah. I was really excited to to see him in that segment. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. Mike. What kind of martial arts do you practice? Oh man, well, I used to practice when I was in middle school, just, uh, like, like karate, but that mm -hmm. was like, man, that was a long time ago. Then I picked up boxing when I was in high school because my dad used to box, okay. uh, but that's about it. But then working with Geo, it just brought my horizons and especially wow. like learning, learning, learning how to do uh, fight choreography mm -hmm. for the first time. It's different when you're not making contact with people. Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. It's all yeah. about the angles, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, I feel like everyone's dad used to box. <laughs> like, yeah, my dad used to box also. <laughs> and my dad yeah. used to box. Gio, um, what kind, of, what kind of martial art did you do? Or you do? Oh, I practice hot keto. My my main base is hot keto. Mm. So I started practicing that since I was well, like eleven or twelve years old, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I've been practicing ever since. And then after that, I, I actually got into some uh, amateur fighting. And then from that, I actually started training with uh, uh, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham, which is a student of Benny the Jet. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's my lineage from there. So, that, so I get to you know, get some of their skills and be able to put it out. And, and I know that Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham and Benny the Jet and my master in Hopkeet and all those guys have actually been in films. So I'm just yeah. following that same trend. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thank you both for joining us live on Tweet Talks. Um, of course. We, we will stay in touch with on, with you guys on your your Instagram, your 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 social media handles because we want to see what's next. You want to see yeah, those, those upcoming like episodes. Yeah, um, uh, so we're also gonna have a watch party tomorrow. So. Oh. Uh, I think you could go to our page, which which on Instagram, which is Real Bros Films with a Z at the end, and yeah. the link is there for the watch party. And we're gonna have all the actors, and then they're gonna we're gonna have a. Wait, what what time is the watch party? It's seven. at seven p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. Uh, so. Is that nine o'clock our time or ten o'clock? Um, it will be ten. Ten o'clock. Okay, it's a three-hour difference. Okay, great. So then we're gonna have to jump in and try and catch that out. Okay. Um, yeah, we have all of all of their um their social media info. So we'll make sure when we post this uh this interview, it'll be on YouTube also. So we'll send you guys that link, and all your handles will be in the post on Facebook. So once again, thank you guys. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tio. Have a great night. Black, Black Nine. Oh, yes. Black Nine. Um, and we will post Titans. that link also. Revenge of the Titan. Thank you guys. Yes. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Okay. Peace. <laughs> awesome. 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 That was a great interview. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, Steven says his grandpa used to box. I... Yeah. My. I think that was like a a, a a rite of passage for mm -hmm. for all for most men. Um, so next up, we have Penny Lelou, 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 <laughs> from the film. Shh, we loved it, Penny. We're bringing her in right now, so she's gonna come on and chat about it right now. Hi, Hello. Penny. How are y'all today? 
Very good. We Penny, absolutely Penny. loved the film. Oh, well, good. I'm glad. Penny, Penny, Penny. But we are a little upset at the ending because of no, the way she, it she, ended, and we wanted upset. more. We she, wanted, she wanted more. Bye-bye, <laughs> Penny, Penny. You well, I had somebody know. ask me if it was going to be a, if it's a pilot, you know, and it's like, uh -huh. If we get enough good reaction and can come up with financing, well, we may turn it into a series or a feature yeah. because we know there's a lot more story that we could tell. Oh, absolutely. Sounds, sounds, absolutely. Sounds good. Now, I got to tell you, we're a little nutty in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I only got a cameo, so I wanted to make sure it you was got, memorable. You got it, on you got it on it. It's very memorable. And, and you did on it. My wife kept looking at me like this. <laughs> Every line that came out of your mouth, I'm like, what? Excuse <laughs> we, we thoroughly enjoyed it, we like honey. That. So we just, like that. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you came up with the concept for the film. Well, it actually was part of a script challenge. And so, you know, when you do script challenge competitions, they give you certain parameters that you uh -huh. have to follow. And so the parameters for this script was that I got spy as a genre. Mm -hmm. I had to have a librarian and mm -hmm. a cure as a situation. I see. Wow. Mm -hmm. So then you just built the story around those pieces. That's it. That's it. Oh, that is so wow, interesting. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and uh, as soon as I did it, I realized, you know, we could actually produce this where I live, you know. And so within two days, I uh, had a producer friend and I said, you know, I think we could really do this here. And I said, and I know who my action hero is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was, he was phenomenal. Uh, so what is your background in the film industry? Well, I'm actually kind of a newbie in certain ways. I've, I've done like six 48-hour film races. Oh, mm -hmm. very cool. And so that's how I started. I didn't go to school for it or anything. I went through 48-hour film races and did six of them. But I did not set foot on one until I was 60. Oh, wow. And so that was basically five years ago. So I've been doing this for five years. And so Shh is my first film that's not from a film race mm -hmm. and that actually had a budget. And then I actually worked with a small production crew. So how did you find the Urban Action Showcase to, to submit your film to? Um, through Film Freeway, la I discovered it last year and I thought, oh my God, Times Square. <gasps> so, but, but it, the submissions were closed at that time, okay. but I contacted Demetrius to see, you know, more about it. And if we would actually fall within the guidelines, you know, because uh -huh. clearly I'm not of color. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Urban includes so many yeah. different colors. Well, he had women in there, and I'm like, are women? Does it matter? You know, since oh, uh, he said that uh, one of the things that he said is that is to be inclusive. Oh yes, yes. that he doesn't want people to mistake that, you know, yeah. so inclusive. Well, and you know, my my main lead character falls in that guideline. But then when I thought, does that mean all women because we're kind of minorities in filmmaking? And he said yes. And I said, well, then I've got it covered. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's, it's it's a great um, avenue for um, filmmakers, actors, and action stars to to explore. Uh, we we really enjoyed your film, and we've been telling. Um, a lot of the the people who are participating in the interviews about actually being at the Urban Action Showcase in person. It is like nothing you will ever experience. Yes. Uh, and that's how we got connected because my, my husband's a martial artist and we've been going the last few years. So wow. we're hoping that we actually get to meet you next year. I hope so. I don't know if I have a film next year. Of course, then again, who knows? Maybe well, we'll maybe we need to just send you some details and you can just make a script around. <laughs> <laughs> that's true because I love challenges like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, my I've only been writing scripts for two years. 
little over two years. Oh my and, gosh. Yeah. And so the first script I ever did was part of a challenge. And the mm -hmm. reason why is a friend of mine is an author and I actually worked for a newspaper. So I've done news writing mm -hmm. and that's totally different from screenwriting, you know, mm -hmm. writing books or writing stories is totally different. And uh, so she had a couple of books she wanted adapted. And, and I'm like, OK, well, I need to learn screenwriting. And one day, 20 minutes before the deadline, this ad popped up on Facebook for the NYC Midnight mm -hmm. Challenge. So it's a New York. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, it, it was like 50 bucks. But regardless, you got feedback. And I'm like man, the feedback alone would be sure. worth it. And mm -hmm. so, and it was like, you had to write 12 pages in eight days. And I'm like, I can do that. Never written a script in my life, but <laughs> I had the software and I'm like, I can figure it out in eight days. Wow, <laughs> that is so ambitious and so admirable, Penny, Penny, to be in the industry for such a short period of time. Um, so uh, Penny's film sh is in Film Block 16 and was nominated in the Short Film Showdown category. Yeah, mm -hmm. we didn't win, but hey, but you know, in Sulphur, Louisiana, it won second place. Second place. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, it took second place in the Calcasieu Paris Short Film Festival just before Hurricane Laura came through. Oh, Okay. You know, it's like it, we did that on Saturday and then Laura came through about on Wednesday or Thursday and wow. you know, really did major damage to Lake yeah. Charles and all of that area. So, oh. but anyway, and we're having a watch party tomorrow also. Okay. Oh. Tell us about it. So we yes. can tell people. It's going to be at 630 my time. So that's 730 your time Eastern. And it's uh, I created a Facebook event to get to the link and all so they can find it there. Uh, they can find it like on my Facebook page, the barefoot director. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they can find the Facebook event there if they want to and click on it to get the tickets and all. And um, so we're pretty excited about that. I'm so excited. I have had so much fun, even though it's virtually with y'all, you're actually the fourth interview I've got to do. Oh, just hi. Hi. Urban hi. Hi. Yeah, okay. Mm, that, that is amazing. Oh, oh. my God. And what? I actually got to meet with a, a, a French direct, a filmmaker that was wow. in the round robin. He's in Lyon, France. And he mm -hmm. contacted me after we did our round robin. And mm -hmm. uh, we've connected up. And who knows? He may come to Texas to work on a film or something that oh. I just, cause I just told him, I said, you know, if you ever come this way, I can help you with the locations and such. And he said, it's a funny thing. You said that because Ooh, I was yeah, just I mean, working I mean. on my feature. And last week I was searching in my area, he said for uh, film locations. And for some reason I started looking in Texas and he said, you are in Texas, aren't you? And I'm like, no. So who knows? He yeah, not much, but luckily he speaks good English. <laughs> I love it. Oh my Other God. than the accent, you know, we both have an accent. Uh -huh. People, people tell me I have an accent. <laughs> you have an accent. I don't have an accent. You have an accent. Oh, yeah, his is stronger than yours, but hey, I love accents. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Penny, you are such a wonderful guest. Thank you, you for delightful. your 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 film. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, once again, everyone, Penny Lelou is the film, film block 16. Yes. And go ahead. Uh, and don't stop being nutty. <laughs> I can't help it. I gotta let my inner Blanche out every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I call her. It's my inner Blanche. I love it. I love it. Penny, we will be in touch. Hopefully, we can get on to that watch party, but we will post it when we post this interview and make sure that the link is there. Thank you so much for joining awesome. us. We hope to stay in touch with you. Love oh, it. yes, please do. And I hope to be there next year if they get oh, to do it. And then hopefully we'll see you. Yes, I will hunt you up. All oh, right. Oh, we'll be there. Thank you, Penny. Have a Thank great you, night. Penny.
Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow, what a ray of sunshine. <laughs> what oh, a ray you're, of sunshine. You're doing your accent, okay? That was not an accent. You did an accent just like her. I did? You know how you do that. You get it. <laughs> That's what you do. We take we take on on other personalities. Yeah, that's what I think it's about. Oh, Thank okay. you again so, to Penny Lelou. We yes. are bringing in Mr. Penny, Philip Lelou's Hardy Philip. right now. Uh, we are we have some great people on tonight. Um, and yesterday and <laughs> oh my goodness, I know yeah. we're gonna bring him in right now. Hi, hi. Welcome Penny. to Tweed Talks. Yeah. How are you today? I'm great. How are you folks doing? Very oh, we good. Are, I'm super good. Yeah, delightful. I like Penny already because she's from Texas, which uh, that already she's <laughs> okay in my book. Oh. <laughs> and that's all she needs. And um, I was a judge at that film contest that she was talking about, the New York Midnight oh, really? Screenwriting Challenge. Yeah, I, I judged that contest about, I think, about four or five years ago. And I, I remember writing up the feedback for everybody on that. So it was like, Yes, yeah, so oh, it, wow. it was interesting to be on that side of things for a change. <laughs> wow, cool. What a small you know, world. She's, still, she's still watching. So yeah, she, she, Penny, hang out with us as long as you want, my friend. You can stay there as long as. Yeah, this is how we make connections. So, so the <laughs> reason why we're doing it like this is because there's no to, physical connection. Yeah, and we're trying right. to. And we're trying connect to everyone. give everybody, uh, you know, enough time because usually when we have someone, we have them for an hour. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah. that. But we, we have so many guests we we decided to give everybody their own time mm -hmm. yeah yeah no you sound yeah. great actually the the audio on this is uh really good i did uh the friday night one uh when they opened the festival and we had a, it was a little rough at times but you guys sound fantastic great oh, like thanks. You, you got it dialed in man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh you should have seen you should have seen when we started people <laughs> trying to get up get on yeah facebook live that didn't work yeah. so we it was a little questionable we pay a little money to do it this way now yeah very nice so uh, philip hardy unconventional warfare nominated for best screenplay tell us about this project uh it was um it i, I started this project i actually uh, wrote it for a director named sean hosley who did a film called uh palm swings about two three years ago with uh diane farr from numbers uh, Jason Lewis, who played Smith Jarrett on uh, on Sex in the City, if you remember that one, the good looking guy, and then Tia Carrera, of course, from uh, Wayne's World. But anyway, he was looking for a script about Christopher Dorner. And uh, really, at the time, he talked about two films that he liked. So uh, Christopher Dorner was a man of color who was a naval officer, and mm -hmm. he was also an LA police officer. And uh, unfortunately, um, he had uh, some events happened in his life and kind of like a slow burn guy. You know, he had a hearing that didn't go his way when he got mm -hmm. terminated from the police department. And um, so he wrote a manifesto back in 2013. And unfortunately, uh, uh, he chose to kind of go the, the violence route. And uh, he went on some rampage shootings in 2013. But the screenplay is really kind of a look sort of in the if you were going to compare it to something a lot like taxi driver it's really mm -hmm. a, a first person narrative from christopher dorner's point of view um a lot of it was taken from things i read in his manifesto and then watched a lot of videos um of, from people that were involved in the case <clears throat> including people uh he took hostage up for a short period of time he was staying at their cabin in big bear but it's really an interesting guy because he, on one hand, he was like this real gentle soul, kind person. You know, he, if he if uh, he treated people really well that he met, bore no malice to. He wasn't just a guy who was violent for violence sake. I mean, he really, uh, he picked a list of people he thought had uh, had uh, had harmed him in his career. And um, again, not not my uh, not my way of doing things. Uh, yeah, but I, I I tried to really understand his perspective and and deliver that so in some respects it's a controversial work there's a lot of racism in the work that's portrayed mm -hmm. there's several scenes uh there's scenes that that he witnessed where he saw from his testimonies uh some uh for example one of his partners threw hot coffee on a like a street person in san pedro so it's it has some elements that might not make everybody happy but i tried to write 
the most honest, what I thought, you know, perspective of the, of the story was. And I think it's a real well-rounded portrayal of uh, Chris. And we're just looking, we've been looking for a, a buyer for this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you know how that goes. Sometimes it takes years to find a home for a screenplay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, in my career, I've written 35 screenplays and, and four teleplays. And uh, I've always, I've enjoyed writing stories or I've written six screenplays that have main characters that are people of color, uh, including the Birmingham uh, church bombing in 1963. Um, I wrote a screenplay about that. That's called now called the meteor. That's one, that's won quite a few awards. Uh, it was a finalist mm -hmm. at the Harlem international film festival and black screenplays matter. Um, I've also wow. written a story about Deborah Nelson, whose daughter, she was an educator in Sacramento, award-winning educator whose daughter was murdered in a drive-by shooting and she's just not not a lot of people know about her except from that case but she just had a spectacular career as an educator and so you know i mean i've, I've enjoyed those challenges and uh, i'm all about writing characters and really trying to delve in into those characters heads and you know and that's how i approach screenwriting that that sounds good you know one of the reasons that we wanted to do this show besides that we you know we go out a lot but we were like in the house mm -hmm. so it came out of the quarantine you know right it's because we wanted to be able to connect people yeah right know? and who knows who'll be watching this because we have friends on 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 this business and that uh, we say hey that's a good idea yeah let me get yeah. connected with them you know yeah. there's a lot of filmmaker that came in with us in the past so you never know yeah that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this yeah it's great that's a beautiful thing <laughs> yeah i love the uh, what you were saying how you you want to you know uh, some of the things you write about are controversial but those are real right yeah. they're, they're real and i feel like those stories really um they resonate a lot with people especially these days well yeah. one of the best compliments i had is the, the one i wrote about the uh uh, church bombing. I've had I had several screenwriters read it and said that they they broke down crying a couple times reading a screenplay. So you can imagine uh, it'd be nice to uh, see the film made. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you want to obviously. My big thing is is I try to write screenplays with a lot of white space, easy reads, ping pong dialogue. I try to engage people right away. You know, I'm not a big believer in. in uh, lulling people to sleep so it's very you know it's always very nice to hear that people said man i loved reading that it was a breezy read and hey i work in all genres i do horror i do uh, uh i've done uh, uh sci-fi screenplays action screenplays i wrote a a comedy another one with a person of color i wrote a story about a, a young lady who goes back in time and meets J jane austen she's a nyu student and she's transported and she actually has an adventure with uh, part of the Austin family. So, you know, I go in all kinds of directions. Yeah, that sounds like a very cool concept. Uh, and where are you, Philip? I'm in uh, beautiful Austin, Texas. Oh, oh okay. Where, okay. <laughs> oh, look. Penny's mouth Penny, just Penny opened is... up. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Is she... Hence my partiality for the Lone Star State, although I'm uh, from Los Angeles. I live uh, most of my years in LA, but I love it here. Lower taxes oh, and cheaper homes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so tell us a little bit about your website, the Script Gymnasium. I know um, on there it says that you do consultations for other screenwriters, script yes. writers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a really, uh, um, I have so many people coming at me and I, I still, be honest with you, I'm, I'm going to uh, help uh, uh, sabotage my own business, but I have a lot of friends. I still, you know, I'll, I'll do consultations and say, read my script for me or whatever. And I have so many screenwriting friends out there. But at one point, I finally decided to start a, a website where I think I have pretty uh, uh, nominal rates. And uh, what I do is I, I look at screenplays. I uh, Most people put them on PDFs once they're done. So I write notes on their PDF files. You know, if there's too much ex exposition, uh, I look at 13, 14 different points. Uh, about the screenplay, uh, screenplay including punctuation, um, dialogue, how they write their narrative. If there's too mm -hmm. much narrative, uh, there's a lot of newer screenplay writers that will 
write a lot of like mini monologues. And there's things like that, that in my personal opinion, that drive me nuts. So I really mm -hmm. try to help writers. I think the best screenplays, you know, you take something like uh, uh, grab the screenplay for uh, Nightcrawler and read that. And, you know, the, the great screenplays these days really have a lot of white space. And, you know, there's not a lot of superfluous dialogue. I mean, there's there's a time and place for that. Um, but so those are the kind of things I look at when I'm giving consultations, um, mm -hmm. you know, so people, they get a sounding board. And, you know, I've uh, I got to say, I've had most of my feedback's been really great from people who said I've helped them mm -hmm. a lot, you know. So thank God for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And helping, you know, just giving that helping hand to other people in the industry. I absolutely Love that. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and giving critiques, I'm sorry, I don't want to take up too much no, time. No, no, no. It's very important. You know, there are a lot of writers that tell me stories all the time where they got slammed by another more experienced screenwriter. And, you know, there's people that say, well, brutality is the best thing. And, you know, quite <laughs> honestly, I think that's a, that's a lot of BS. I think really the best method is constructive uh, critiques and 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 uh, giving people constructive information that's why it's great to lead off and tell people hey what here's what you did right in my opinion here's what you really did beautifully great narrative or you know maybe dialogues your strength however you know this over here and and to be you know it look it's it's the old uh, you give what you get how you want to be treated in life and i oh, I, just, right. I had a couple people really beat the hell out of me when I first got going. And, mm. you know, fortunately, you know, I, I really got a lot of things going really quickly. So I got a lot of real first enforcement early on. And so, you know, it's the whole thing to me is, is be constructive in what you're doing, whether you're re reviewing work or, uh, um, you know, screenplays or whatever, there's no reason to make it. I, I don't know. Maybe it's frustrated artists that, uh, do critiques sometimes they just get nasty or whatever so it's <laughs> a theory of mine <laughs> yeah well you may be right <laughs> you might you might be right so we're going to give the info for your website and things mm -hmm. like that absolutely yeah i think that's very and, useful mm -hmm. and i hope you get connected with some filmmakers yes yes great appreciate it thank you so much for joining us hey thank Twitter. you guys for having me i really appreciate it and uh hey th thanks thanks again Hey, we appreciate you. Have a great night, Philip. You take care. I'm leaving now. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you. <laughs> All right. So next up on the block, we have Tom Hand of The Shadow Boxer, which is a short in block number three. We're bringing him in right now. Hello. Hello, hey, Tom. How are you? Hi. Well, thank you. How are you guys doing? Very good. I'm super good. You good. You look so tall up there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just the angle of my, my yeah, computer. That's okay. <laughs> we could see and we could hear you very well. So tell me about um, the shadow back. So how did you come up with that? Um, so I spent five years living in Thailand. And whilst I was there, I was thinking of ideas for, for movies. Um, and I actually wrote uh, a feature length screenplay um, about a kickboxer um, getting into a difficult situation and then thinking about whether or not he wanted to carry on kickboxing or not. Mm -hmm. um, and so the five minute film is actually a, a teaser for the feature length version to try and get interest in the bigger two hour movie, hopefully. Wow. Well, you know, I, I was thinking that because I was thinking, what's coming next? What's yeah. going to happen? Yeah. Because I, he, cause he asked him, are you ready for the, the next challenger or whatever? Right. And, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to stop there because I didn't want to give the, you know, I didn't want to give the story up because I want people to go and watch it on, mm -hmm. on action. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's a teaser. It's like a cliffhanger. Yes. What's yes. going to happen next? <laughs> yeah. I, I want to know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So it was a very interesting cast concept. How did you get the actors? Um, so the actors actually worked uh, or still work at a kickboxing gym in Bangkok, which was where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I had kind of 
made some friends in Bangkok and one of them said, well, you should maybe speak to my friend who owns this gym. Maybe he will let you film in the gym. So we went to check out the gym as a location and, you know, the location was perfect uh, for yeah. what I was after. And then just kind of fortunately, you know, these guys, the two main uh, kickboxers in the scene, they're the coaches at this gym. So mm -hmm. it just kind of naturally developed. Well, you know, these guys, they're obviously really tough. They're mm -hmm. willing to, you know, kind of, kick and punch each other for real. Um, so in the end, they were they were really up for doing it. Uh, oh, sorry, that's gonna finish in a moment. Um, and, um, and then the other actor, the coach, he's actually um, a really well established actor in Thailand. I don't know if you saw um, the movie Only God Forgives uh, with Ryan Gosling. Yeah, so he... Familiar. Yeah, so he, the guy who played the coach had a supporting actor role in that. And I met him at a filmmakers networking event in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of mixture of networking and then kind of luck with the people who were connected to this gym. And then they were like, okay, can you bring everybody you know who's a kickboxer? And then they were all in the background um, mm -hmm. to try and make it feel like a, you know, a real living gym. So well, yeah, it worked out well. It did look that way, yeah. yeah it looked, yeah. looked that way. It looked like they were hitting each other too. <laughs> yeah, they they were. Um, I mean, they were probably, let's say they were hitting each other maybe like 80, 90% strength. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, you know, quite often in an action scene, if you're cutting um, every couple of seconds, you can choreograph it and, and stage the position of the camera so that you can do it as stunts. You know, you can fake the blow and everything. But the idea for this was trying to capture the whole round of fighting um, in one shot. Um, and so for, for that reason, um, you know, you couldn't fake the blows as much so much. They really are hitting each other. Um, and the whole thing was completely uh, choreographed. Every single strike was completely planned, like with maps for every moment in, in the scene, so that it was a dance between the two fighters, the mm -hmm. camera operator, and also the referee. So they knew exactly where they were going to be, what punches, what kicks. So they knew what was coming. So, you know, they were able to move a little bit or block it a little bit. Right. Um, but at the same time, they really are hitting each other, which was very generous and very brave of them to do so. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 80 or 90% still sounds like it would hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was nominated in the short film Showdown. Yeah, that's correct. So I was very um, happy and and feel very fortunate to have had this attention and support from the festival. So a huge thank you to you guys and everyone involved with the festival. I feel very honored to be involved. So how did you manage to, co to connect with the Urban Action Showcase? So um, I submitted through uh, Film Freeway, okay. through the, the website and the app for submitting. And, um, you know, I was mostly looking for action film festivals because I thought, okay, this is, you know, the main area that it's going to get representation. Um, and really pleased that I submitted it to this one because, you know, it's had attention and, and some uh, screenings in different festivals. Um, but this has easily been by far the best festival, hands down, in terms of just how much of a real living thing it has been and, and, and this and how directly involved we are in everything like a real festival would be, you know, if it weren't for the pandemic, yeah. mm -hmm. just online. So it's been by far the best festival experience I've ever had. So thank you. That's, that's oh. great to hear. That's great well, to hear. Well, that's all. That's all the myth is. We we just um friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we've been going um, as we had mentioned before. We've been going for the last couple of years, and um, to experience in in person it is is a different is on a different level. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, um, if you have the opportunity to go next year, I, I hope so. 
I, I definitely highly recommend it because you get to network with so many people, share your passion projects. And I think that's really important for artists because it's, I mean, even though there's a lot of people that are involved and in, you know, all these different filmmakers and actors and things like that, sometimes it can be a very lonely place because <laughs> you're trying to get a project made. Um, mm. So yeah, experiencing that in person, I think is, and, is, is, and is also, essential. And um, you know, I want to mention because uh, Penny before, she was saying that if she has a film, you really don't have to have a film to run and enjoy this. Right, right. I, had, I didn't have a film in the last four years. So. Yeah, we, yeah, we've never had a film. We just <laughs> went. We never had a film when we went. So, but but you get to um, network with other people. That do. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely want to visit, um, you know, whether it's next year or the year after, whenever it's possible. I've never been to New York before, and I really want to. So those two things could go hand in hand. I really want to meet the other filmmakers um, and... Uh -huh. Yeah, see what's going on in the New York filmmaking scene, meet as many people as I can. And super, you know, I've seen the videos on the website of last year and previous years, and it looks like it's got such a buzz, so dynamic. Yeah. So I really want to experience that for real, hopefully next year. Sure, absolutely. Okay. So, Tom, what is up next? You, you have the full link that's already done, correct? That's already completed? Uh, the the two-hour screenplay is completed. But, uh, yeah, so uh, the idea is with the teaser to try and find investors to yeah. make the full version. Um, and Thailand's top studio, uh, Saham Hong Kong, um, were very interested in making the feature. Um, and that is actually what led to me making the teaser because they they really liked my drama showreel and they said, okay, how about action? Have you directed action before? And I said, no, but I have this strong vision of how I want to do it in one shot. So let me go away and make this. So this teaser was my first go uh, at an action scene um, ever. And um, unfortunately, it didn't lead to making the feature version with them. It turned out that actually they wanted to see more drama <laughs> in the teaser, which is also understandable. So, um, you know, I've since moved to, to Shanghai, but it's a project that I'm still pushing and I'm hoping to get lucky. I'm hoping comes in, someone comes in, sees the potential, and maybe we get to make this feature version at some point in the coming years, hopefully. I think I think you will. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. you. Yeah, don't don't give up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Tom Ham, thank you so much for joining us on Tweed Talks. Good luck to you. And the Shadow Boxer full length is going to happen. We just know it. And let us Thank know. you very much. Let us we'll know. Do. Be doing this for a year. <laughs> <laughs> so when we post this video, Tom, we will make sure all of your social media handles are there. This video um, of the interviews will also be available on YouTube, so you can share that link um, wherever you like. Awesome. Will do. Thank you very much, Crystal, and thank you very much, Pedro. It's a real pleasure. It's the first time I've ever had the opportunity to do something like this. So thank you very oh, much for having me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Great. We're glad that you did it with us then. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a real honor to be involved. So thank you. Take Love care. the action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, care. maybe see you next year. Hopefully meet you in person next year. Absolutely. And if you just visit in just give us a call. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. All right. Thanks guys. Have fun. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bring her back in. <laughs> hey, Penny. Penny is still there. Thank you for, for hanging out. You know, we always encourage um, the filmmakers um, to hang out because you never know. Hey. Never know. <laughs> hey, we brought you back in. Woohoo! <laughs> so, if I can't uh, be in New York for real, at least I can be there virtually. Yes, you are. <laughs> a lot of people here in New York watching you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have some comments there. Let me see. What do we have? What are they talking about? Um. Oh no, they're just saying that's very, very cool. Um. Da -da -da, they're, they're talking about the set. Oh, and they were talking about the time difference. Well, here it's eight fifteen, and I have to get up at four. So, good night. Oh, Steve had to leave early because he had to get up early. 
Um, so yeah, that was, um, that was, that was really good. Um, and I've so already found Philip on stage 32. <laughs> so I sent him a connection I request. That comment. I was like, oh man, we let him go, but I'm glad that you see, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Making connections and that's stuff. Right. So, um, yeah, she, she found, she had asked the question in the private chat. If he's on stage 32 she has apparently found him already yeah well well he's I, told I sent him a request he, he, said, <laughs> he said he judged you in the past that's so funny what a small world yeah i'm about five hours from austin but i do go there occasionally <laughs> I, i'm sitting on the louisiana border so i'm on the swamp end of texas on the swamp end of texas yeah yeah see we got it all here it's not all prairie and hills and you know pasture I, there are pastures over here but there's a lot of swamp we got the alligators there too <laughs> alligators oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i'm sitting on the louisiana border i'm just as close to new orleans as i am to austin oh okay, oh, okay. So, okay. and that must be where the last name comes comes from my husband is yes has french descent yes and some of his relatives did come from louisiana he did and he was born in port arthur texas <laughs> so how would you pronounce your last name it would be lulu or lee lux lee lux you know is is that they tended to he tends to use lee lux and i did for well, years you pronounce the x i said i said that on T T. I i i jumped down his throat because my hus husband is of, of Haitian descent on his father's side, and you know they, they speak um, French. French Creole, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. Creole. And so I'm like, don't you pronounce that X? And then you said Leela, so I'm like, hmm, okay. Yeah. Use it both ways. And so uh, my daughter actually went to college in at McNeese in Louisiana, and she used Lelux. And so that was a hard sell over there. Okay. <laughs> over there, it's Lulu, you know. Lulu, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to announce who's coming on on Friday because maybe you'll want to catch our live video. So go. <laughs> So we have um, Dwayne Parker, who is actor, director, producer, and writer. Um, Teresa Gales, who is another script writer. Um, who else? Who else? Dizzy is the, is the name, who is co-producer of a, a film called Tainted Getaway. Um, Ooh, that sounds good. That is an Australian action film. And <laughs> Robert Husted, who is a writer, director. So um who else is coming on that's not it robert cole robert he's coming cole on is, on Friday. actually he's not coming on no he's not coming on but he's um a screenwriter as well scriptwriter um so we have a great show coming up on friday we're actually having two at a time come in in those film blocks so if you would like to see our live video we're friends now on facebook aren't we i don't know if you sent me a friend request I, I followed your you followed the barefoot director. Yes. So if you're not busy Friday at 8 p.m., that's not 8 p.m. your time, is it? Oh, wait, you're in it's seven. It's we're seven. an hour. By, yeah, we're an hour. Is that your husband behind you? Hmm? Is that your husband behind you? <laughs> oh, probably. Was he in shorts and a t shirt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You watched in the movie, right? Uh, He's What's not really movie? much into art and such, and so he. <laughs> did he um? Did he play in the movie? No, oh. I gave him a credit though because he did help move furniture into the apartment. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's the most important That's thing. Important. <laughs> he did do that. He's not into filmmaking. He's like, I don't understand that stuff. <laughs> he he, just he moved, moved furniture. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh All my right. gosh, thank you so much for joining us, Penny, and for hanging out for the rest of the time slots. We really appreciate it. Let's oh, no. It was my pleasure. Thank you. It's yeah. been fun. My <laughs> pleasure. Yes. Have a good night, Penny. Have a good night. You too. Bye, guys. Bye bye. That was um a a funny, amazing, <laughs> very informative show. And I said I think yes. I say that about all the shows. Because they are. Yeah, yeah, they really are.
there are everybody has something to offer mm -hmm. everybody has something to teach i always said no matter who it is you could learn something from someone and i like that people that didn't know anything about filmmaking mm -hmm. but they had the desire and the yes. passion to do it yes and they went and did it and that's important um for people to know mm -hmm. that no matter where you find yourself on if you have a passion just go after it yeah. big big yeah. time that's you know i i wanted to wear this jacket because you know the urban action film festival it's, it was the black um, dragon well it was his birthday yesterday yeah i saw that mm -hmm. and now i'm really hot i'm sweating honey you always being hot <laughs> so sweet. Yes. <laughs> Always be happy. Penny's laughing. Penny's <laughs> laughing. Okay, so one more time, we are going to announce who's coming on on Friday. Tomorrow we will not go live, but Friday we will. Dwayne Parker, he is coming on at 8 p.m. He's of Night Seven Productions. The name of his project is called Vex. Um, it was nominated and won for best urban action in the new media category. I'm so, so excited. That is in film block, film block number 16, Teresa Gales, script writer. The name of the project is called, I hope I say this right, Nikosi King of New York. Mm -hmm. um, she was a finalist in, uh, she was a finalist. So I'm not sure we'll have her clarify when she comes on um and she's coming she'll be coming on in that same block with Dwayne, the 8 p.m block dizzy who is co-producer of the film tainted getaway an australian action film of rodman pictures he's coming on at 8 20. um he will be alone actually in that block i lied robert husted is coming on yeah, in that block with him the nice. name of his project is called lost treasure of the valley um and they won best visual effects i love that visual effects are very yes. important in a film mm -hmm. um especially these action films it's in block 13 and uh then let's see how can um, you see that how can I? What? It's normal size writing. It. So yes, we are very excited to have, <laughs> to have these guys on on Friday night at eight, starting at eight p.m. So we'll probably come in a couple minutes early okay. because we want to give them enough time. So we'll probably come in at like seven fifty-five, mm -hmm. a couple minutes early. So we hope Penny will join us for that and just be a guest and say, "Hey guys, I'm watching," and <laughs> leave some comments in in the thread because we love replying to you guys in live live and in color. And as always, we're going to say, thank you guys for joining us live on Tweet Talks. Love, peace, and harmony. And harmony. Have a great love night. Love you. Bye-bye.